Can you please keep it down? <laughs> Ladies and gents, uh, yeah, thanks for coming back to this uh, post-fight press conference. Um, I think it's short and sweet considering what time of night it is, but I'm sure everyone will agree that that was an incredible show and an incredible team. Um, sensational from every angle to have a fantastic young prospect making his debut in such fashion, and then to have a heavyweight title shootout between two unbeaten heavyweights, one the Canadian champion, one the British champion, that was like the heavyweight equivalent of Hagler Holmes. That was a roller coaster, to say the least. I think everyone here is, is absolutely strained. I think we can all see. Looking around, I think everyone's great. This is what this this is what this man does to you, and it's you know it's something that once he's got incredible boxing ability, and once he sticks to that, he'll be just as exciting, and he'll he'll bring that world title home, and he'll unify the heavyweight title. So we've got a very special situation here, very special night, and uh, I'll open it to the floor. Any questions? We've obviously got. Chris Eubank Senior here, uh, pleased to have him here. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a great attraction to the show. Um, and then there's also Ronnie Davis on the end there. And to the left of Tyson, Chris Johnson from Canada, Tyson's brother. So, any questions, please? Tyson, how did you feel getting into the ring tonight? I felt gorgeous. I felt good, really good. The, the first round just looked a little bit as if you didn't want to be there, just the impression. No, no, I just started slow, you know. <laughs> Um, I was just too relaxed to think, and uh, as soon as I got in, then I woke up. Saw that again. What was it like to get hit on the whiskers like that and go down? The most greatest feeling you've ever felt in your life. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it felt like? Well, I'm asking you, was it? No, it, um, you don't really feel it, do you? You get it, you go down, you get back up, and that's it, really. I don't, you don't think, uh, your chin's out now a bit, so. Uh, broke me chin. No. No, it feels all right, you know. Champions get go down and come back up, and chose true grit to get up and, and not be the guy out. So I'll be the Tyson, is that the make for you? Because the last two fights in the row got caught and then finished it quickly as well. Is that going to bring your instinct down? I don't know what it is. You know, I get tagged and I'm half asleep sometimes. Like that first round, I was totally. Uh, Rocked in my last two fights, popped out in the third one, so I'm going to Sorry? Nick. Well, it's, it's horrible, obviously, but I've, no, I've noticed that he was square on. I noticed that he was off balance, and I could see, the, as soon as he, he put his hands down, I could see he was over. So, from that moment on, I knew he was fine. And if anything, I knew that would wake him up and he'd go straight to work, which he'd which he done in the first time. Well. Nick, uh, you've had some good boxes in your era. How highly do you rate Tyson? I, I, I think he's a phenomenon. He, he's, he's just, you know, for a heavyweight to have his, his size, his speed, who can throw combinations the way he does, who's, who's relentless, who's got a big heart, who's, who's determined. It's, you know, he, he's the full package. He's just, he's just got to you know, stop getting drawn into a, a gunfight, basically. That's, that's what he's got to do. He's got to start being smart. And, and once he does that, he's the best heavyweight on the planet. Yeah, but isn't that one of his best assets that he goes in totally? No, because you only you should only really do that when when, when you need to when there's no other route. Um, you know, a fighter like Pagic, you know, Tyson Tyson could beat him with his jab and his jab alone if he used it. And he could do that to most heavyweights in the world. He really could. So he's he's you know but this is the learning curve he's on. He's only twenty three, he's just turned twenty three. He's seventeen and 0 now. 
and, 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 the, and the future is it's an, you know, it's a really bright future. So when you think of the world heavyweight title, what do you say? I'll, I'll say, you know, we're probably about 16 months away. I, th I think, you know, he's he's got a lot of, um, you know, a lot, a lot of work to do. By the time he gets there in 16 months' time, he'll be, he'll be a different fighter altogether. He'll be more mature, um, his conditioning, because with each fight, you know, you get the conditioning, you get the rounds in the bank. He's, it, it, it'll be, you know, he'll be ready for anyone. I mean, it, I, I honestly believe he could beat Povetkin tomorrow. So, but, you know, he's looking bigger than that. He's better than that. He wants the glitch goes. So 18 months from now, he'll beat the glitch goes. So, so, you're reducing that, like, a couple of weeks ago, you were saying 18 months, two years. You're reducing, so that's... Uh, well, well, look at him now. He's 17 and 0, Kevin. You know, by the time we get to another 12 months, he's probably going to be close to 22, 23 and 0. <coughs> you know, he's he'll be ready to go. Thanks, Fred. Awesome. Perfect. The minute when you get caught, like tonight, like you know, see things worked out well for you. Shh. Do you ever, you know, consider your uh, boundaries? When you get caught, like you did tonight. You know, it's heavyweight boxing, and as you can tell, it takes one punch to get a spark out, really. And, um, you know, I never doubt myself. I, even when I was on the floor, I thought, right, I'm going to get him now. It's definitely time to get rid of him. And uh, that's what I've done. What's the priority for yourself and Big Gun? And for March 17th, Big Gun, does that be this big one? What do you want? What, for March 17th? Madison Square Garden. Who do you want, or what's the priority? We're, we're talking about some, some exciting range, you know, but um, he's, he's also fighting Jan 28, so uh, we're, we're going to work towards that. But that's, that's, that's a dream come true for both of us. Tyson's always wanted to fight in Madison Square Garden, and I've certainly always wanted to fight. So what's the January fight, Mick? Sorry. Uh, we're booked for Jan 28. I asked Tyson earlier, was his hands okay? And he said yes. Okay. So Jan 28, we're, we're potentially looking at the uh, Empress Ballroom in the winter garden to play. And then, uh, and then Madison Square Garden March 17th. Fantastic.